Hey, welcome back. It's Craig Beals. We've got some more lessons about the mole, and specifically this time we're going to look at molar mass. In the previous videos, we had an introduction to the mole, learning about what it was, and then the next video we learned how to turn moles into particles, like moles into atoms and things like that using some dimensional, dimensional analysis. But now it's time to start taking it to the next level, and the first thing we have to do to be able to take it to the next level is first figure out the molar mass. So molar mass by definition is pretty easy. It's just the mass of one mole. And the nice thing about it is the periodic table is set up really well to easily figure this out. So you need to get yourself a good periodic table. You should always have one in chemistry anyway. But I've got one up here just for us to look at. And um, let's see if we can figure a few of these out. It says, what is the mass of one mole of aluminum? So we need to find aluminum on our periodic table, and aluminum is right here, number 13. And aluminum has a mass on the periodic table of 26.98. The great thing about this is that's also the mass of one mole. So we can do this, 26.98 grams of aluminum per one mole of aluminum. And here's the great thing that makes chemistry not the same as math. We're going to need to be able to do this later on with our um, mole ratios and our molar mass. But we can say that one mole of aluminum is equivalent to 26.98 grams of aluminum. So notice this molar mass between these two is interchangeable. And that's useful, useful when we get to dimensional analysis. Let's take a look at lithium. Lithium's over here, it's number three. And um, the mass of lithium is 6.98. Those are atomic mass units, but the nice thing about molar mass is we can just put grams of lithium and say that that is one mole of lithium. And just like we did with aluminum before, we can also say that one mole of lithium is equivalent to 6.98 grams of lithium. So these, again, are interchangeable when it comes to dimensional analysis. And this is the molar mass. Well, let's do some real work with this. The question says, how many grams is 4.50 moles of aluminum? And you've seen this before if you've taken some lessons from me. This is the easy steps, or what I think are the easiest steps to do these. We write down what we know. And when I say what we know, in a problem, it's what's ever given to us. And generally in chemistry, it's whichever one has a number and the units with it. So I'm going to write that down in green. Write down what we know, which is 4.50 moles of aluminum. The other thing you're going to learn from me is that I don't memorize the formulas for these. There's no need to. If you do dimensional analysis the way I'm going to show you, you'll never need to memorize any of these things. All right? Because 4.50 moles of aluminum. And it looks like I want my answer in grams. So I know I need a conversion factor here with moles of aluminum on the bottom so that these will cancel out. So I'm going to put moles of aluminum down here. And I know that moles can turn into anything, which means I can go from moles into grams. So I'm going to put grams of aluminum up here. Again, this is the molar mass. We have mole and grams. Grams is mass. So mole and mass, mole and mass, mole and mass. That is the molar mass. So the mass of one mole of aluminum, we already looked it up on the periodic table a little earlier, is right here. It's 26.98, 26.98 grams. Now these are going to cancel, cancel, cancel. And I get out my trusty calculator. I type in 4.50 times 26.98. Enter. That is... 121.41 and I only have one unit left here that's grams of aluminum and it turns out that's what I wanted my answer in anyway so here we go let's try another one with the lithium again I don't memorize any of these conversions there's no need to you just follow dimensional analysis so if I look at number one here it says write down what you know this is the only thing that's given to me so that's my no well, I write down what I know which is 125 grams of lithium. I'm not going to memorize any of these conversion factors. I'm just going to figure out, well, what do I want my answer in? This time I want it in the number of moles, and right now I'm in grams of lithium. So I need a conversion factor to get rid of grams of lithium. 
In order to get rid of grams of lithium, I have to have grams of lithium down here. I can only turn grams into one thing. I can only turn grams into moles. This is one of the reasons that we're learning about moles and that moles are so important. So I can turn that into moles of lithium because I know that one mole of lithium is the mass of lithium, the mole and mass, mole and mass, the molar mass. Where do I get that? I get it on the periodic table and you'll need one you can see a little better than this. But the mass of lithium is 6.94 grams. And now look, I'm in moles of lithium and that's what I wanted my answer in. This is going to cancel, this is going to cancel. I take out my calculator, clear it out. I type in 125 times 1, but I don't need to do that, so I'm going to go straight to divided by 6.94, hit the enter button, and I've got 18.01. So my answer is 18.01, and what are my units? Moles of lithium, because that's all I have left, and that is what I wanted my answer in. Now let's look at this with compounds because quite often we end up with compounds in here instead of just dealing with one element or one atom. So if I've got a compound, in this example down here I've got sodium chloride, I need to add up the mass of all of the pieces of that. In sodium chloride I have sodium and I have one of them and I have chlorine. And same thing, I look them up on the periodic table, sodium is right over here right there, sorry, and the mass of sodium is 22.98 and that's grams per mole, we know that, but I'm just going to leave it at 22.98. Chlorine is over here, number 17, and its mass is 35.45, 35.45. Now to figure out the mass of this entire sodium chloride, I just need to add up one sodium and one chlorine, which is 58 0.44 grams and because this is technically the molar mass it's grams of NaCl per mole or one mole of NaCl. Now you can see how this is going to be useful from the practice problems that we just did. This is one of those conversion factors that we're going to need to be able to get to our answer down the road. Let's take that to the next step. In the other example, we had just one mole. We were figuring out, figuring out the mass of one mole, but now we've got 2.25 moles. So how is this any different? Well, we go right back to our simple rules. Number one is I write down what I know, which is 2.25 moles, M-O-L, of NaCl. Now, I don't want my answer in NaCl. I want my answer in mass, which is grams. So I need to get rid of the moles of sodium chloride. The way I do that, right here, conversion factor with moles of sodium chloride at the bottom, moles of sodium chloride down here, and I can turn moles into anything I want, which means I can turn moles into grams, because that's what I want my answer in, of NaCl. How do I do that? Well, I have moles and mass and moles and mass. That's molar mass, the molar mass. I've already calculated the molar mass on the last screen. The molar mass of NaCl was 58.44, so we have 58.44 grams of NaCl in one mole. Let's just take of our, care of our accounting here, get rid of these moles, and I take 2.25 times 58.44, and I get 131.49, my units are grams of NaCl, grams of NaCl and that's what we wanted our answer in. So we're good to go. I wanted to make sure to include one that was a little more complicated like aluminum sulfate. You can see this slightly more complicated molecule but I wanted to show you how to calculate the mass of this. Well if I'm just trying to figure out the molar mass, it's the mass of one mole so I don't need to do any dimensional analysis I just need to add up the parts and pieces of this. So let's do that. I've got aluminum and I've got two of them, so I'm going to put a two in parentheses next to this because I need to times that by two. Then I've got sulfate, SO4. I've got three sulfates. So when I figure this out, that means I've got three sulfurs. I'm going to put sulfur here, 
3 next to it in parentheses to remind myself to times it by 3. And then I've got oxygen. Well, I've got four oxygens in this one sulfate, and I have three sulfates. So 4 times 3 is 12. So I've got oxygen, and I've got 12 of them. Now I need to look up the mass of each one of these and then multiply it. So aluminum, we've looked it up several times, is 26.98, 26.98 times 2. I'll get that in a second. Sulfur is right over here, number 16, and it is 32.07. There are three of those. And then I've got oxygen, which is, I use 15.99. If you're using 16.0, that's totally fine times 12, and then I just need to do the quick math. I've got all my numbers up here now, and I just need to add them together to get the overall molar mass of this entire molecule. When I do that, I get 342.05. And this is the molar mass, the mass of one mole. So this is grams of aluminum sulfate per one mole of aluminum sulfate. It's as easy as that. I think we've got this molar mass down pretty well now. We can figure out the molar mass of single elements by looking them up on the periodic table. We can figure out the molar mass of compounds um, by figuring out uh, compounds and molecules and formula units just by adding up the mass of all the elements that make it up. And we can even figure out even further than that, if we have more than one mole of something, just by some simple dimensional analysis. Now when we take that to the next step, in the next video, we're going to convert mass to atoms and atoms to mass, or grams to atoms and atoms back to grams, using moles and using the molar mass. So come back and see me for the next one, or you can bounce around all over on these videos and get help in uh, moles and stoichiometry or anything you uh, uh, might need. Also, come over and visit me at bealscience.com where I've got explanations of all of this stuff and a whole lot more, including a whole bunch of explosions. But keep on learning.